It's always really impressive when a company defines a category, when a product or brand becomes the name that you think of in association with a particular item or service. For example, if you injure yourself and you need to sanitize the wound, you'll use Dito. If you're making a craft and you need some glue, well, you've got Fevico for that. If you're craving noodles, there's Maggie. And if you're out for a walk on a sunny day, you'll buy a bottle of Bisleri. And this one in particular has been so successful that smaller companies will actually copy the logo and branding and just change a couple of letters here and there to capitalize on this product's ubiquity. But when it comes to meat and seafood, chicken, mutton, fish, where do you go? What company, what brand do you turn to? Well, for a lot of us, there is no company. We just buy unbranded meat from the butcher shop in our locality. For the longest time, India's meat industry has been dominated by tiny butcher shops. There weren't any big players, any category defining brands because meat has always been a bit taboo in India. Butchers wrap meat in newspaper or black polythene bags the same way they would condoms, tampons, menstruation pads, and alcohol. And because of this, because of the stigma attached to meat, it was overlooked by entrepreneurs. The market was completely disorganized. It was ripe for disruption and innovation, but nobody could see through those black polythene bags to the multi-billion dollar opportunity contained within. Well, not until Abhay Hanjura, anyways. When Abhay was younger, he wanted to be a soldier. He went to army school for 13 years in preparation for this. He had his entire life mapped out. But then, at the age of 17, less than one year before he'd be eligible to enlist, he was in a motorcycle accident, and he lost one of his legs. Now, most of us would think of this as a tragedy. A young man's dreams shattered, his plans derailed. But Abhi refers to this accident as the best thing that ever happened to him, because it enabled him to see his life from a completely different perspective. His grandfather used to tell him that what we do with the 10% of our lives dictates what will happen in the remaining 90% of our lives. And so after this accident, Abhi set out to live a meaningful existence. Of course, this is a lot easier in theory than it is in practice. And after a brief stint at Infosys and then Google, Abhi found himself working in the insurance industry. And in seven short years, he'd carved out a pretty impressive career for himself. He was a senior vice president at an insurance broking firm called Futurisk. But he didn't feel fulfilled. He wanted his life to mean something. He wanted to build something bigger than himself. And so he started daydreaming about becoming an entrepreneur. He'd spend his free time thinking about problems that he could solve, about markets that he could disrupt. And one day, he realized that there might be an opportunity in meat. He went to his dad with the idea hoping for some parental support. But instead, his dad was shaken. He said that the meat industry was beneath them as a family, that they were Kashmiri pundits, not butchers. He was vehemently against his son starting up in meat. And Abhay could have agreed with him. He could have walked away from his idea then and there, deciding that meat was in fact beneath him. But instead, this conversation only strengthened his resolve. He realized that this mentality that his father had, this dogma that was so pervasive across the country, this idea that there are vegetarians and non-vegetarians as though vegetarianism is somehow the default and eating meat is a negative thing, this was precisely why meat in India was such a massive opportunity, why there was so much room for disruption and innovation. After this chat with his dad, he called up a friend of his in the venture capital space, Vivek Gupta, and the two of them met up to discuss. In January of 2015, Vivek was working at a prominent VC firm called Helion Venture Partners, and Abhi was sure that Vivek would see things from his perspective. There was clearly an opportunity here, but the dogma that had blinded Abhi's own father to the possible success of a meat startup was also influencing Vivek's perspective. He came from a vegetarian family and challenged Abhay saying that if this is such a massive opportunity, then why hasn't anybody else done it? Where are the incumbents? Where are the market leaders? And these were difficult questions, but they needed to be asked. Was Abhay seeing an opportunity where there was none? Was there some reason why India's meat industry couldn't be organized? Some fundamental characteristic that he had overlooked? Abhay wasn't sure. 
All he knew was that if he was going to convince Vivek that his idea was a good one, then he'd need to do proper research. So he started putting together a deck called The Meat Project. And it was while putting this project together that Abhi discovered some incredible information. At the time, in January of 2015, India's meat market, the fifth largest in the world, was worth $30 billion. And of this $30 billion, $28.5 billion, or 95%, was unorganized. In other words, this was a massive opportunity, but Vivek still wasn't sure that they were the right people to capitalize on. They both had high paying jobs. They'd worked hard to get to where they were in their careers. And at this point, Abhi was also being offered a position as the CEO of Future Risk. And so once again, Vivek challenged Abhi, saying that you're not gonna quit your job. Let's be serious, this is all a waste of time. It's a fantasy and nothing more. This was one of those moments in Abhi's life. One of these 10% of times that would decide the remaining 90% of his life. He could continue in this comfortable, lucrative, salaried position as a senior vice president and eventually be promoted to CEO, or he could write his resignation letter right there in front of Vivek and send it off to his boss at Future Risk in that very meeting. And of course, that is exactly what he did. This kind of courage is contagious. This is what leaders do. They take the first step, knowing that others will follow. After sending it off to his boss, Abhi forwarded his resignation letter to Vivek, who changed a couple of words here and there, and then sent it off to his boss at Helion Venture Partners. They were officially entrepreneurs, but their startup idea was actually quite a bit different then, in March of 2015, than it is today. See, initially, Abhi and Vivek wanted Licious to be the zomato or swiggy of fresh meat and seafood. They wanted to connect consumers with butchers. That was it. They were going to handle the logistics between point A and point B. But very early on, they realized that there were two key problems with this model. One, people didn't want to pay to have their meat delivered to them if they could just walk to the butcher themselves. And two, it was actually very difficult to maintain the quality of the meat on offer. Licious didn't have any control over butcher hygiene. They didn't have any control over the health of the animals that were being slaughtered, or the conditions under which the meat was stored, or for how long it was stored. They quickly realized that their startup was only going to succeed if they did it all themselves. A farm to fork model where they had complete control over every step of the supply chain. They cut local butcher shops out of the equation and went on a hiring spree, starting with Joe Manavalan, Licious's third co-founder. Joe was a chef. He'd worked for Oberoi, JW Marriott, and he also had his own business, Painted Platters. And it was from Joe that Abhi and Vivek discovered how difficult it was going to be to guarantee fresh, hygienic meat to their customers. See, at room temperature, meat actually starts to slowly rot about four hours after slaughter. But if it's stored at or below zero, it starts to freeze, which also isn't good. The optimum storage temperature is somewhere between zero and four degrees, but maintaining this temperature from the time of slaughter to the time of delivery is a really difficult and expensive thing to do. After learning all of this from Joe, Abhi and Vivek began to understand why no other entrepreneurs had taken up the challenge of building a direct-to-consumer fresh meat and seafood brand. But they were in this now. They had quit their jobs. There was no turning back. First, they zeroed in on 30 meat vendors and animal farms whose meat met their quality standards. Then, they opened up a meat processing center in Henur in Bengaluru and filled it with experienced butchers. And then, they set up a meat delivery hub in Maradahali, bringing in a crew of delivery partners to transport this meat into the hands of their customers. Everything seemed to be coming together. Licious was all set to kick off India's meat revolution. In August of 2015, the startup began its first day of operations, and it was a complete and utter disaster. Their supply chain collapsed under the weight of just 35 orders, and they immediately had to shut down operations. They realized that what they were doing was so different from anything that anyone in India's meat industry had ever done that their staff were struggling to meet their expectations. They spent the next two weeks training everyone intensively ensuring that a greater emphasis was placed on timeliness, hygiene, and keeping orders between zero and four degrees. And then they relaunched. And this time, things went better. 
In their first full month of operations, they received 1,300 orders. And after this first month, 90% of their customers came back for more. By the end of 2015, they were fairly confident that they'd achieved product market fit. And they brought in 1.47 crore rupees in revenue, which they generated through the sale of a fairly diverse portfolio of chicken, lamb, and seafood products. Oh, and these products were being delivered in very atypical packaging. This is what it looked like, a white box, a smile on the front, and clear transparent plastic underneath. It was a completely different experience from the black polythene bags that most consumers were used to. And they loved it. This early success, especially in spite of their day one setback, was enough to convince investors that Abhay Joe and Vivek were on the right track. After some back and forth with 314 Capital, Kanwal Jeet Singh, who is one of the co-founders of Helian Venture Partners, and Mohandas Pai, the former CFO of Infosys, Licious raised a $1 million seed round in September of 2015, and got to work putting this money to good use. One of the biggest issues that they faced early on was wastage. Between 40 and 45% of all of their meat didn't actually end up in the hands of their customers. And so this seed round helped them to cover the cost of so much wasted meat, while also investing in increasing the efficiency of their supply chain by building out its physical infrastructure and also developing technology to predict customer demand in advance. By April of 2016, things were going really well. They were doing 15,000 orders per month, which is more than 10x what they were doing during their first month. They had 11 delivery hubs across Bengaluru, which had enabled them to achieve an average order time of 90 minutes, and they had 150 employees. Based on this growth, they were able to secure a $3.4 million Series A round from 314 Capital and Mayfield. But with the amount of growth that they were targeting, this was a pretty small amount of money. It only enabled them to grow their business within Bengaluru. And unfortunately, during this fundraising process, Abhay, Joe, and Vivek started to feel like it might be difficult for them to raise a Series B. They predicted that if they were to expand into Hyderabad in Delhi NCR, which was part of their plan, they were gonna need $10 million. This was a lot of money for investors to pour into the startup because they had nothing to compare Licious to. And remember, with the exception of California-based Mayfield, Licious's cap table was predominantly Indian. According to Abhay, many of the startup's investors were vegetarian, and some held dogmatic views towards meat. And so when it came time to raise their Series B, well, Abhay, Joe, and Vivek had a difficult time. They realized that India's VC ecosystem didn't believe in what they were doing. One VC who was on the verge of investing pulled out last minute. Their LPs, who were incidentally Gujarati, vetoed the investment because it was into a meat business. In fact, it got so bad that Abhi would jokingly say that VC was short for vegetarian capital. And because of this, Licious was forced to raise from outside of India. They raised their $10 million Series B round from Singapore-based Sistema Asia Capital, South Korea-based Neoplex, California-based Mayfield, and one Indian firm, 314 Capital. In fact, 314 Capital has actually invested in literally every single round that Licious has ever raised. But anyways, fast forwarding to today, and Licious is present in 14 Indian cities. They deliver meat to more than a million households every single month. And they've also expanded their product portfolio too, to include ready to eat and ready to cook products alongside their fresh meat items. And like many online food ordering startups, Licious's growth was accelerated by the pandemic too. They grew their revenues by more than 3x in just the first six months of the financial year of 2021, bringing in 600 crore rupees, which is up from their entire financial year of 2020 revenues of 180 crore rupees. And at the time of us filming this video, they're well on their way to ending the financial year of 2021 with over 1,000 crore rupees in revenue. And investors have finally started to believe in what they're doing. In October of 2021, Licious raised a $52 million Series G round led by IIFL, making them India's first ever D2C unicorn at a $1 billion valuation. So I just want to rewind here for a second. I think that we need to come full circle before we can end this story because it began with a bike accident to the best thing that ever happened to Abhi Hanjura. And I just want to focus in on what his grandfather told him. 
that 10% of our lives dictates what happens to the remaining 90% of our lives. You can be an executive, you can be a director, a consultant, a vice president, an employee of any kind. If it makes you happy, then do that. But Abhi wanted more. He wasn't satisfied. And I honestly don't know if he is now. Maybe he still hasn't found Inlicious what he was searching for when he submitted his resignation letter to Futurisk, but I hope that he has. And as a Licious customer myself, I can honestly say that his startup has made a huge difference. Licious is in a category of its own. Fast, clean, hygienic, dogma-defying, taboo-breaking. If you had asked me what I thought of Indian meat when I first shifted to India in 2017, this is the image that would have come to mind. And this is the image that comes to mind now. That's huge. That is progress. That is innovation. That is licious. All right, that is the story of Licious. I really hope that you guys enjoyed the video. I hope that you learned something from it. And if you did, it would mean a lot to us if you could hit the like button, share this video with a friend or two, maybe share it on social media, platforms like Reddit, Twitter, even WhatsApp, anywhere would be amazing. We would really, really appreciate it. We put a lot of work and effort into the script and into the editing of this project. So we would really appreciate it if you guys could share it as much as possible. And also, if you haven't already subscribed, now would be a great time to do so. We post new videos every single week about Indian startups, entrepreneurs, and the latest news. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode of Backstage with Millionaires, and I will see you in the next one.